in South Carolina if McCain wins here. In, uh, oh, <laughs> equal time. Give, you back. Give me the money you owe me. Is, is this, Give it to me. Is this Hulk Hogan? Give it to me. <laughs> Chuck Norris still here. Chuck Norris, huh? Cat dragged in Barnacle. Oh, barnacle. Yeah, when are you going to sleep? They say there's not a homeless problem in the <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my gosh. That was uh, you believe February, it? I believe, 2008, the New Hampshire primary. Um, wow, we've all been up all night. Yeah, the remarkable... Um, Remarkable, Mike, that uh, hmm. it's been 10 years today. Incredible. 10 years since uh, the passing really of such a horrible, horrible shock for all of us. Incredible. I remember the day vividly, just vividly. And uh, looking at him now, I mean, you realize what the business misses, what we miss yeah. uh, with his absence. Yeah. He had uh, a tremendous joy. Uh, in what he was doing and in sharing his insights and asking questions and a fairness about him, uh, transparency, um, and really kind of paved the way for everything that we do here on Morning Joe. He blessed our show that day when he came in the door and sat down with us because not a lot of people wanted to sit down with us and, and hang out. But Tim did, and it meant so much to us. We'll, well he, never forget it. You know, he had a genuine love of politics that yeah. stemmed well beyond uh, when he began doing Meet the Press and working Absolutely. for NBC, working for Mario Cuomo, uh, working for Pat Moynihan, a genuine love and a respect for politics. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, I think, the people who practice politics, the members of the House, the members of the Senate. And his gift was at Meet the Press, this is what I think, uh, was his demeanor. He had a demeanor yeah. that played well, both in person, obviously, but on TV as well. It wasn't a gotcha demeanor, as no. is so prevalent today. It just, uh, it was him. Well, it wasn't a gotcha demeanor, but he invented the whole idea of going back and getting those clips and saying, well, Senator, let's show a clip of what you said about North Korea three years ago and then explain to me how that fits into what you're saying. Now, he was really great at holding these people accountable yeah. in a very, in a very uh, nice way. But I think it, but it was never personal. Right. It's never I think personal. also, if you look at where we are right now, um, where uh, East doesn't meet West, uh, Red State America doesn't meet Blue State America, that was something that uh, Tim, uh, an ability to bridge those divides, uh, Tim had it as a kid from Buffalo uh, who worked for progressive Democratic lawmakers. He could certainly understand the Democratic side of, of uh, the debate, but he also was really good at understanding mm -hmm. not only the Republican side of the debate, uh, but also understanding where America was at any given time. And I have a feeling that he would understand yeah. how we got to where we are today. Oh, he absolutely would. And he absolutely would have understood the Trump phenomenon before Trump was elected, well before he was elected because Timmy was always more sidewalk than he was seminar. Uh, he just understood. He had a gut level instinct uh, for what was happening in the country, despite the fact that he was Tim Russett, host of Meet the Press and a, and a media celebrity. That never left him. Buffalo never left him, Joe. You're absolutely correct. Just a walking, talking repudiation of, of the tribalism that, that kind of governs our politics today. And I think it would be so strange for so many people on the left today to look at a guy who had worked uh, for the people he worked for and then to watch him holding Democrats accountable in the same way that he holds Republicans accountable. And that is the second thing. I mean, someone who is just so f fundamentally dedicated, the, the various temperamental things are, are super important and obviously he's a nice guy. You all, you knew him better than anybody here. But just the notion that the core of the job is to hold powerful interests accountable and ask tough questions, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, a Trumpist, whoever. And, and that it was totally irrelevant that he worked for Mario Cuomo because he was going to be just as tough and just and serve that principle regardless of who was sitting across from him. That uh, is something that uh, we, you know, is, is the foundation stone of our business and everybody forgets about it all too often. He had it yeah. just in his bones. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. you, could, you could watch endless hours, repeats of Meet the Press when Tim was doing it. And I would challenge anyone to say, well, he, he's a Democrat or he's right. Republican. You couldn't tell. A and lot of it was temperament. What's yeah. that? A lot of it was temperament yeah, and, and tone. He yeah. was able to really strike a perfect balance. Right. And there was the lawyer in him who mm -hmm. said his goal was, and he said, my goal is to be the worst enemy 
of whoever sits across the table from me. That I am just like Steve said, like a great lawyer, I'm going to go to the record. I'm going to dig up the evidence. I'm going to present them with the evidence, and I'm going to see how they respond to the evidence. And some responded well, and uh, some responded the way Ross Perot responded. Yeah. I don't. I don't think anybody's ever deflated a presidential campaign as quickly as uh, that was deflated. Uh, it seems to me also uh, there were one or two other candidates that went on there that were in the middle of a, mm. sort of a, a political spring of sorts that, uh, that he was able to call out. You, 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 you knew that when you went on there, you were going to have to answer the tough questions, and sometimes you got out there alive politically, and sometimes you did not. Well, and the other side of it was that if you if you went out there, if you were a young, up-and-coming politician, and you went on and you faced off with Tim, and you came through it, that was a rite of passage, and that was yep. how you made the major leagues. Right. There were people like Barack Obama who, who you know, he had been a, uh, an incredible phenomenon in a lot of ways, but until he got on Meet the Press and was able to get through a couple sessions with Russert, no one took him really seriously, but once he'd done that, I was like, okay, that guy can actually yeah. hit me. Major league pitching. Not to Absolutely. put you on the spot, Mike, but you, uh, you and Tim were so close and such good friends. Your families uh, did so much together. Do you have a favorite story? Oh, that's hard. Oh, that's that is, hard. That is hard. Although I one just, you can tell on television. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> one you can tell the, on television. You know, there's <laughs> the story that I told, uh, and it is eulogy at, at the Kennedy Center about years ago. The Russets and the Barnacles decided to take a trip out to see Tom Brokaw out in Livingston, Montana during the summer, I think it was 1991 or 1992. And the idea of Tim Russett and myself out in Livingston, Montana is a bit absurd <laughs> to begin with. So we decided because we had uh, Luke Russett was in one car with Tim and Maureen and then Nick and Colin Barnacle by themselves in, in the second car with myself and my wife. And they had these little walkie-talkies in the cars. They were talking back and forth with the cars. Tim and I decided, let's have a race to see who can get to Livingston from... Uh, uh, we were in Wyoming crossing the border, see who can get to Livingston first. So we were f flat, straight ribbon of road, just going yeah. like too fast, 80, 85 miles an hour, when suddenly, no cars on the road, we get pulled over by a, uh, by a Montana State Trooper. <clears throat> he gets out of the car and he comes up, both cars are there, and he stops. Tim gets out of the car, I stay in the car. The kids are yelling, Dad got busted. And the state trooper goes up to Tim and says, uh, you know, he says, you know how fast you were going? And he says, too fast and everything like that. He says, okay, he says, but I got a problem, he says to Tim. He says, I only have one ticket left. <laughs> and Tim looks at him and he looks at the cars and he says, well, he says, I was following him. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, gosh, we thank Tim for so much, but especially for Tim Barnacle. Yeah. <laughs> His godfather, too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and much, much more. Um, ten years ago, it's really hard to believe. We'll be right back. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.